Hello, welcome to LCAT News for November 30th, 2017. I'm Jen Carlos. We begin with a rundown of Tuesday's Town Council meeting where several presentations and public hearings are on the agenda. Among them, the annual tax classification hearing. Director of Assessing Diane Bishop provided a review of the fiscal year 2018 valuations as well as the tax rate options available to the Council for taxing commercial and residential property. We are here to present to you the possibilities if you should decide to shift a tax rate and we do have some numbers available. Board of Assessors Chair Christine Salnier conveyed the board's recommendation that based on the percentages of commercial to residential value, a single tax rate was the best interest um, for the town. And generally the, the rule of thumb, the benchmark is that when your commercial industrial properties are reaching close to 25 percent, then you might want to consider a shift. Mm -hmm. Uh, but with these numbers, and because we've had so much residential growth in the town, they've been pretty steady, and uh, the numbers speak for themselves. It's not a matter of being pro-business or pro-residential. Uh, it just, it's not, when the numbers are 82 to 18, it's just not a good idea to shift. It's mm -hmm. not a recommended list. The projected tax rate, which still has to be certified by the state, is $20.94. Salnier noted that while overall values rose modestly, there were some significant increases in commercial and industrial property. Our, the total valuation only went up 2.2 percent, so there wasn't a great deal of change in the values. Within the classes, there are changes. Uh, the residential was about a 2 percent increase. However, our commercial uh, saw between, individually saw between 3 and 8, the average being about 4 percent. With the support of small business owners in attendance at the hearing, the council voted to adopt a single tax rate. We're generous with community events and, and support of the community, and we would encourage you to stay with a single rate. Residents can see a list of certified values and the amount of any increase or decrease in value over last year by visiting the assessor's page of the town website. That difference multiplied by the 20.94 figure will give homeowners an estimate of how much their taxes might be going up over the last year. The council briefly continued its public hearing on the prohibition of marijuana at related businesses in town before voting unanimously to adopt it as a zoning bylaw. The floor is yours. You, you have the bylaw. <laughs> it, basically, this planning board felt that this reflects what the town wants uh, based on the vote that was held in town and based on the fact that we had no opposition to the proposed bylaw when we held our hearing. That was it? No, none? No, none. Yeah, some people show up and say they liked it. No opposition. That's good. That's perfect. They like marijuana or they like the bylaw? <laughs> <laughs> and the prototype you guys used was the one previously approved by other communities. That's already been approved by the AG's office in this format. That's and, correct. And the other comment that I thought the public or viewers would want to know is those that want to use legal marijuana within their residence under the, the new laws that's being uh, uh, created is still allowed. This does not allow residents not to have the, uh, uh, the, the, the max, up to the maximum number of plants in their house and to be able to cons uh, consume the product under the, under the statute. That's correct as well, right? That's correct. All in favor? Aye. 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 And another brief public hearing on the application by AMG Retail, developers of the new gas station on Shaker Road, for retail sale of beer and wine. Um, we're looking for a new application for um, premise, off premise license for uh, wine and malt beverages. Uh, it's an annual license. The license, I think, was previously issued to the prior owner, uh, Ellie Belcher, but um, for whatever reason, this is a new new license application. Um, I have the, I don't know who I should give this to. We, we sent the a butters notice. All, no, all notice, so um, we're here tonight asking for your approval. The hours that we're requesting are uh, 8 through 11 on Monday through Saturday and 10 to 11 on Sunday. Attorney Edward Sabella remained vague, however, when asked again about an opening date for the business. Just a quick question. <laughs> Obviously, I think uh, 
I don't think any of us could go into a, a store without getting questions. When's that uh, yeah. station uh, opening up and things like that? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> soon, right? Hopefully as soon as you guys approve the plan. <laughs> <laughs> In other business before the council, resident and youth coach Gary DiStefano sought a commitment from the council to pursue completion of the synthetic turf field project at the high school. LCAT's Anthony Santanello had a chance to talk briefly with DiStefano before the meeting about his concerns. Um, I'm planning to talk to the council about um, the completion of the synthetic turf field project. Um, the warranty is going to be up in the field in the spring of 2018 and the temporary bathroom facilities are still in place. So we never constructed a concession stand slash bathroom facility. We never finished the uh, visitor's bleachers in completion. So my goal is to try to reintroduce this to our new council and our new town manager and try to get the ball rolling so we can complete the project. I reached out to the newly appointed um, DPW director, Bruce Finney, and um, he told me that it's only brushed once, maybe twice a year. They've done it in the spring. Um, when Joe and I looked at it, it was very matted down. It wasn't the original way it was. When it was put in, it was more grass-like. There was more give to it. The field is hard. There's filler beads that are heavy in one area, bare in the other. And we actually looked at the drains of the field because a couple weeks ago when we had a heavy rain, it was puddled on parts of the track and puddled on the field. And we should never have a drainage issue there because it's designed to drain completely. So if you look at some of the drains and actually get down in your hands and knees and look, they're, filled of, they're full of filler beads and debris. So there's a lot of work and a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. And I'm just here to raise awareness and to talk to the council on what's our timeline of completing this project. I know everything comes with a dollar figure. There's, I have many ideas how we can fundraise. Um, and reach out to the community to try to get this project completed. But seven years down the road, and we're still using portable bathrooms, and we don't have hot water to sanitize dishes. That's why we're restricted. And when we serve food, it can't be food that we need to clean, pots and pans. Um, so I'm just looking for, for maybe an answer, or at least get the conversation going with the council on when do you think we can get this project completed. Councilor Joe Ford agreed to shepherd a plan through the capital process for FY19, which is already underway. We'll have to prioritize what's most important. I think the bathrooms are most important, I would say. So, you know, how much does that cost? If we can peel that part of the project out, look at what it might take. So my suggestion would be to skip a, skip a meeting, come back at the beginning of the January, the first January meeting, I'll have some time to, you know, uh, sit down with Gordon or go meet with the, the school committee. Um, Rich, I know you're here today. But, you know, to talk to them about who owns the project, right? Who, who should own the project and how, how do we bring it to completion and make it a, a nice facility for people to use. Uh, we could probably get a little more rental out of that facility, well, you know, and, and then maybe, you know, generate some money and stop renting porta potties Town Manager Denise Menard notified the council that the town had withdrawn from participation in effort with several other municipalities to regionalize public safety dispatch, in part due to a lack of support from the state. The, re the reasons for withdrawing mostly, and, and this is not done by just me, uh, I've met with the chiefs on a number of occasions, and, um, and Ryan Quimby, who would be instrumental in all the IT-related pieces that would be going on. Um, we only received $1.3 million of a $9 million project, and maybe three months ago we found that out. Two months ago, three months ago we found that out. But the state has not been able to tell us in all that time what that represents, what they would be funding. So the longer we wait, the more we're scratching our heads. It sounds like an arbitrary decision that they just decided to do $1.3 million. They're um, talking about radios of a certain kind are not going to be grant funded, mm -hmm. which then falls back on us. Mm -hmm. And it just seems that the plan that we started with is not the plan that the state is willing to fund to a level that would really give us the backing that we need. The town has entered into and withdrawn from other such efforts over several years. 
And finally, the Council heard a short presentation from Terry Glusko, a member of the East Longmeadow Veterans Memorial Committee, describing the committee's efforts so far to construct a veterans memorial on the ground in front of the Pleasant View Senior Center. The purpose of the East Longmeadow Veterans Memorial Committee is to build a veterans memorial in the town of East Longmeadow and dedicate it to the military veterans of East Longmeadow and all military veterans. It is also to memorialize the sacrifices and to recognize and honor their sense of duty, their courage, and the commitment for answering the call when the nation called upon them. It will be a place for family members to go and reflect on the sacrifices of their loved ones and for the community at large to assemble on Memorial Day and Veterans Day to pay tribute to all veterans. Glasgow says the group has a working model of the design and outlined a description for the counselors. We do have a working model, model of the memorial design, but it remains a work in progress. The it's memorial. In office if anyone wants to see it. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen it. The memorial will consist of ten monuments, of which five will be designated for each branch of the service, with a top cut at a 45 degree angle situated with a medallion for each branch of the service. The other five monuments will be for World War II, World War, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, with the names inscribed of those East Long Meadow veterans who were killed in action. On Thursday, several members of the group traveled to Enfield in East Windsor, Connecticut to view recently completed veterans' memorials in those communities. Now an update from the East Longmeadow Police Department, where LCAT's Nick Hansman spoke this week with Chief Jeffrey D'Alessio and Sergeant Michael Ingalls going into the holidays with a focus on safety. We went to the East Longmeadow Police Department and spoke with Chief D'Alessio and Officer Ingalls. Chief D'Alessio went over an upcoming event which will be held by the Youth Safety Committee. The event will be geared towards informing both students and parents on substance abuse and addiction. On December 7th, just want to make you aware there's a Youth Safety Committee will be holding a free seminar for parents and students of middle to high school age. Uh, the committee will be presenting uh, representatives from the Springfield DA's office, the East Summit Police Department, the East Summit Public Schools, and the Springfield and East Summit Health Departments. It's, it's a very informative night. It's two hours of your time. It starts at 6, runs about 8. During that night, between six and eight, there'll be three sessions, 25 minutes in each session. The speakers will talk, and then they'll take a five minutes to questions and answers, and then they'll move on to the next session. So it'll be a fast-moving night, hopefully it'll be very informative to the parents and students moving forward with uh, the youth safety in town. Okay. The East Summit Youth Safety Committee has a Facebook page that will provide more information for future events, the upcoming event on December 7th. Uh, just type in East Long Meadow Youth Safety Committee uh, Facebook and it should pop up to their uh, site and you'll be able to get the information you need moving forward. It's a good link to have to keep uh, yourself informed uh, with that organization and there's many more events planned for the future. The December 7th seminar will take place at Birchland Park. Now we take you to Officer Ingalls who gave us some tips on keeping personal items safe during this holiday season. We want to make people aware of personal safety while they're shopping. As far as carrying your purse, we always want to make sure you have your purse on your body, uh, not in your cart while you're shopping. That way it's not accessible to other people to grab it or take things out of it while you turn away. When you bring packages to your car, you want to be parking in a well-lit spot, kind of close to where everyone else is, not far, further away if you can prevent it. Um, when you put your packages in your car, you want to make sure that you're putting them in your trunk, not in the back seat, in the front seat, where they're inviting for people to come in and break into your vehicle. Keep an eye out. And also, back to, the, back to your personal items, your purse, your wallet, make sure that you ha still have those items on you. You're not leaving them in the cart and turning away. And, you know, focusing on other things, it gives these an opportunity to take things from you. So always want to make sure that you're aware of your surroundings and uh, making sure that everything is secure. The police department would also like you to be aware of possible scam calls. People will call you up, say they're from the IRS or from other companies. They want you to send them money or donate money to their cause, the IRS will never call you at home. Um, they'll always send you a letter 
They will never call you and ask you to send any money. No one will ever ask you for your social security number over the phone. Um, and if people do call you and ask you that and you think they're a legitimate company, ask them to send you some papers in the mail to make sure that it is legitimate. Another phone scam um, we've been fam familiar with is that um, people will call you and say you've won some money or they have a they have a large check that you need to cash, but first you need to go to CVS, Target, Walmart, Walgreens, buy a gift card and send it back to them. No, not, no legitimate company would ever ask you to send them money. That is a phone scam. The Eastland Metal Police Department does not solicit for donations over the phone. There are some departments that do that, but the Eastland Metal Police Department would never call you and uh, ask you for a donation. That's not something that we would do. You always want to be safe no matter where you are, here in Eastland Metal or anywhere you go. Everything is always the same. This is a safe community, but we get things that happen here too, just like everywhere else. A reminder that this Friday and Saturday evening, the ELHS Drama Club will present its winter production of The Ash Girl, a unique retelling of the Cinderella story. Tickets are $5 for the show, which begins at 7 p.m. in the ELHS Auditorium. On Wednesday, December 6th, the ELHS Band and Chorus will hold their annual winter concert featuring the ELHS String, Jazz, and Choral Ensembles, Concert Band, and Concert Chorus. Tickets are $5, and that program begins at 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium. And again, the East Long Meadow Youth Safety Committee Night will be held on Thursday, December 7th at 6 p.m. in the Birchen Park Middle School Cafetorium. That will do it for this edition of LCAT News. Remember to watch all our LCAT programs on demand at our YouTube channel, LCAT01028. Until next week, I'm Jen Carlos. Thanks for watching.